Okay, in this topic we're going to talk about constructing linear functions. And there are four different ways that I see math, and that's uh, in the verbal descriptions, in the symbolic descriptions, in the numeric descriptions, and the graphical descriptions. So what we're talking about here in constructing linear functions is designing the symbolic representation. Okay. We want to get f of x equals something times x plus some other number. And linear functions work in a way where uh, when they uh, happen like this, you see f of x is equal to ax plus b, where a is this coefficient on x. This is the constant rate of change that you see each time uh, you're consecutively adding that amount. And then B is what we call our initial value or our uh, y-intercept. So it's our y-intercept or initial value when x is equal to, to uh, 0. And this is our slope or rate of change. Okay, so when you're given, some, given a numeric uh, representation of a line, uh, like a list of points or a table values like this, uh, you can take the rate of change and find out what is the constant rate of change for each individual point, or you can uh, do a difference in y values or a difference in the x values. So this it looks like I, I'm going up by one, so plus one each time. Uh, then over here I'm going up by three. So the constant rate of change is I'm constantly adding three for every one x I'm going up. So this would be f of x equals 3 times the number um, x, right? And my initial value is 5, so I would just say plus 5. So whatever the 0 value for x is, that is your b value right there. Okay, so that one's a little bit easier, but this one will be a little bit harder because they don't give us the 0 value, and also it's not consecutively going up by 1. So here I have to find the change in my function value over the change in my input value. So this would be, let's see, 6 minus 3. Oops, 6 minus 3 would be 3. And then my negative 5 minus 4 would be negative 9. So um, my rate of change, I could divide both of those by 3 and get uh, negative 1 third is my rate of change. So right now I have f of x equals negative one third x plus my initial condition. So I need to figure out what that is. And the way I would do that is just use it as a variable for now. And I'm going to plug in one of these points. So how about 4, 3? So 4 for x and 3 for f of x plus b. And then I solve this equation for b. So um, that makes negative 4 thirds, and then I would add 4 thirds to both sides. So 4 thirds plus 3, well, 4 thirds is 1 and a third, so that'd be 4 and 1 third. Right? So my 4 thirds is 1 and 1 third. So if I turn that into uh, a mixed fraction, then it would be uh, 4 and 1 third or 12 plus 1, 13 thirds equals b. Okay, so now I can rewrite my function now that I have my b value, I'll just plug it in, and I say f of x is equal to negative 1 third x plus 1 1 third, or I could write it as 13 and a third, or 13 thirds as a mixed fraction, or an improper fraction. Okay, so that's converting to the symbolic. Uh, if I take my graph and I turn it into a symbolic. So here I'm looking for what is my initial condition. So when x is equal to 0, right, here's my x values going up 1, 2, 3. When x is equal to 0, I'm on the y-axis and it's equal to 5. So I can say f of x is equal to, now the rate of change is going up by 1 over by 2. So I rise over 1, be 1 half, and then plus 5 is symbolic representation of the function. Okay, over here, now they don't give me the rate of change, but I could figure it out right, by finding out what is the change in my y value 
versus the change in my x value. So the, let's see the difference here, it's going down 4, so minus 4, and it's going over 6, so plus 6, but I could reduce that fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 2, so I get uh, negative 2 thirds would be the slope. So my function value f of x equal negative 2 thirds x and my initial value when x is equal to 0 and it is equal to 4, so plus 4. And that is the symbolic representation. Okay, um, let's do the verbal to symbolic. So here it says a cell phone plan is $25 for the month plus 10 cents per minute. So I assume they want us to write a function for however many minutes. So I'll say f of t, the function with respect to time, uh, for a given month. So the total cost is what I'm looking at. It's going to be, well, it's $25 whether I make a call or not. So this is going to be my starting value, 25. And then it's going to be 10 cents times the number of minutes, so 0 0.10 times t. And that would be my function right there. So for every minute, I, I pay an additional 10 cents. Okay, a gym membership is $150 initiation fee with $50 a month fee. So what is the cost? I'll change my brain. I'll just say C of T. And this is in months this time, right? Because every month that you go to the gym, you have to pay another $50. So it would be 50 times the number of months, so 50 times T plus the initiation fee, which is the one-time cost. So that's how um, these functions will show up in the real world. And a lot of times, it's you have some initial cost plus uh, the rate times that amount of time that you're going to be spending.